All right, all right, let's stretch it out, stretch it out. Everybody stand up, ah, jumping jacks. Okay, our next speaker, those are terrible jumping jacks, I apologize. Uh, our next speaker, you're excited, I'm excited. I've introduced him so many times and every time he kills it without fail. Uh, yes, I am talking about Michael King, AKA I Pull Rank runs Ipole Rank Agency in New York. He's a former rapper, he's a polymath, he does everything. Uh, Mike, that, Mike wrote a blog post a few years ago called The Technical SEO Renaissance. Still one of the best SEO articles ever written uh, in the history of SEO, still relevant today. You can go read it on the Moz blog. I'm happy that he's speaking here today. Let's kick it over, Mike King. Musk was right. Artificial intelligence is definitely going to destroy the world. <laughs> it just needed a little help from me. When I saw that his company, OpenAI, had a technology that could generate messages as though a human wrote them, I was intrigued, not impressed. But when they said it was too dangerous to release to the public, I knew I had to get my hands on it. Now here we are. I've had enough machines running GPT-2 to clog every protocol and messaging system in New York City from the stock market to air traffic control with coherent gibberish for the past 108 days. <laughs> the world has fallen into chaos and no one has proven savvy enough to solve my puzzles and take back control. It's simple, really. Step right up to my three ring circus and try your luck at ranking in my virtual search engine. Send in your so-called SEO gurus, your marketing geniuses. Let's see what they're made of. Oh, <laughs> looks like our favorite repeat contender's back. Let's see if her 71st attempt is any better than her others. It's been 108 days and no one has beat my game. Only the future of the city depends on it. <laughs> this time I know I got it. I've seen all of the combinations, so I'll definitely make it through. Okay, it's the e-commerce site. First, let's get Data and Alyssa competitors, run Screaming Frog from the command line and extract some key data points and parse it out to BigQuery since the site is so big. Lots of duplicate content. Two page types are exactly the same. Hmm. Last time I canonicalized those, the net effect was a traffic loss of about 15%. Let's set up a split test to make sure that the page to page canonical is worth deploying. Okay, no to the canonicalization. This is actually pretty fun. Normally a test like this could take 30 days, but this game simulates that in a few seconds. Looks like there's been some sort of migration, but the internal linking structure has not been updated. Luckily he made this easy. All of the URLs are the same, except for the removal of the product subdirectory. I can fix this quickly on the database layer. It's basically like find and replace in a Word document. Let's back up the database in case something goes wrong. Okay, let me get these going quickly in a spreadsheet. Remove the product string from the URL and set up the mapping. 
Now I can run a batch string replace in my SQL from Node. I'll just open the spreadsheet as a CSV and loop it through. Bam. It'll take a while to run, but everything is fixed. Oh, she's getting better this time. She knows about submitting a request for a crawl increase from the crawl team in Search Console. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe she'll finally get to the next ring. There can't be much more for me to knock out on this challenge. This site is pretty much optimized on page. Now let's set up some Google ad scripts with a few business rules based on absolute rankings, SERP features from SERP API, and external conditions to get integrated search going. I'm sure that's gotta give me some brownie points to get me out of here. I wish I could make the site's internal linking structure update in reaction to these changes too. Damn it, I forgot that external data is tied to the real world and the real world's data is cheaper. <laughs> Sorry, your 71st try was no better than the first. Thanks for playing. We have lovely parting gifts. Actually, we don't. But you knew that already. <laughs> Enhance. I can help you beat this. Who is this? Based on some of your techniques, you know exactly who this is. You're right. But I haven't learned anything from you in years, my cool king. Listen. You're the only player left now. What do you think happens when this madman gets bored of you? I went to a meetup at your office once. Is it still in the same place? Of course. I'll be there when you're ready to win this thing. Oh, you guys making plans without me? Great. Now I get to hang out with some has-been SEO liberty so we can save the world together. This better not be a waste of my time. Wow, I haven't been here since that IPOL rank meetup. This place is really falling apart. Mike, what did you invite me here for? To film some whiteboard Fridays? Where are you? You know, magic is just creepy after a certain age, man. It's nice to meet you too. We've met. I know, Casey. I also know why you keep going in there. Cool, keep it to yourself. Why don't you tell me what happened to you? Me? Yes, you. You used to be the go-to guy. Honestly, I really admired your work. Before or after I lost my entire team to that madman? Oh, so you did notice. Yeah, I mean, I didn't take out an ad in the New York Times or anything, but I wish it was me instead of them every single day. You're gonna have to do better than that. I don't, I have a family. It'd be irresponsible of me to go in there. I thought I taught them all better, and I thought they'd be able to beat the game. But they couldn't, and I gotta live with that. Help, they all got further than you, but they don't have what you have. My superior skill set and coding ability? Nope, your relationship with the clown. We're not gonna talk about that. Do you know why you keep failing? I'm guessing you're gonna tell me, and then we break into some sort of training montage. This ain't a movie, Mike. If you know so much, why didn't your team make it the whole way through? You keep failing because you're thinking logically. You're not accounting for the accelerated chaos that the Dark Clown is introducing into the Serps. He's got all the same rules and all the same systems as what you'd expect in real life. It's just that everything is faster and there's a layer of randomness. All the sites you're competing with in the simulation are being immediately reactive to your changes. So why am I not getting out of the first ring? Well, here's an example. Your fix for the internal linking structure changes was smart, but I think you know you can go a lot further than that. And if it's possible, then the Dark Clown's game expects it. From what I've observed, he's looking for the most complete solutions possible. Have you ever seen what eBay does with their internal linking structure? The legendary Dennis G blogged about this a couple years back. There are parts of it that are directly reactive to what happens in the SERP. If something ranks in page two, they programmatically build enough internal links to that page and pop it up to page one. A lot of the big e-commerce sites have figured this one out, but every site has a different threshold for the number of internal links that you gotta build to see position changes. Say what now? Let's take a step back for a second. The web is just a series of programs. The output from a program that is your web server and front end stack is the input to the program that is a search engine. Obviously. Our programs need some composite metrics. Those can be used to drive some changes to the logic of their output. The first step is identifying keyword owners. In other words, 
How do we identify which URL on the site owns which keyword? You can pull position, page authority, and clicks, or traffic, and devise a keyword ownership score. And I didn't send my team in there. They all went in there on their own accord. Some of them were the first to go in, but none of them were given second chances. Only you got that. Taking those three values, position, traffic, and page authority, or whatever URL level link authority metric you're comfortable with, we run this equation on all the pages ranking for a given keyword. Using that, we can determine the best URL for each keyword throughout the site, and then we can adjust the weights as needed to get the best values. What about the on-page targeting? What if a page is better targeted in the page title or on-page copy than the one that the score determines as the owner? Yeah, this is just a quick and dirty, but you could add edit distance from the page title, entity salience, or LDA scores to augment the keyword ownership score. Oh, that easy, huh? Well, now you have a way to quickly know which page should own which keyword. With that list of keyword owners, you could bulk update the anchor text for links across the site on a database level like you did with the URLs. It'd be a string replaced on the database level within the primary content block based on the anchor text. Although you may want to review it a little closer, than just a string of place. You may want to use a DOM parser. And you can add and subtract links at scale based on where pages rank. If something ranks on page two, inject the wealth of links into the body copy and other link blocks, and voila, you got page one rankings. But you should A-B test until you find that sweet spot in the number of links that you need to build first. Okay, that's a solid tactic. What else you got, old man? Hmm, well, the Dark Clowns game is just a simulation. We have one too. We built it on the back of the Common Crawl and the Wayback Machine data. It's just one of the many use cases of the Common Crawl. And if you're not familiar with it, the Common Crawl is an incredibly powerful data set of billions of pages in their metadata. You could use it to build a link database, or for broken link identification, or web scale data extraction, or to build a seed set of URLs for anything, really. I can show you some things that'll help you get through all three rings of the circuits. But first, let's talk some more about composite metrics. Those will really help you drive scalable optimizations. Okay, two more composite metrics. These help with the scalability of making decisions around whether or not you should optimize or retire a piece of content. When you perform a quantitative content audit in a tool like URL Profiler, there's a lot of quantitative metrics to choose from. If we take some linked metrics like page titles, meta descriptions, and word count, and then combine them with numbers of images and videos, and then sprinkle in some analytics metrics like time on page, unique page views, and bounce rate, then add the total number of links and social shares, as well as the mobile and page speed scores, we can compute a composite content performance metric. You sure you got enough metrics in that formula? <laughs> Similarly, we can take the ranking, search volume, and keyword difficulty of keywords associated with a given URL, and then you can calculate a keyword performance potential. Let me guess, Y equals something, something times LN, something plus something. It's fundamentally the same equation with different values plugged in. R is the ranking score and the values change based on the ranking. Now, once you compute the CPP and CPS values, you compare the two and determine the threshold of whether or not something is performing well enough. And if it's not, does it have enough potential for you to optimize it further or should you delete it? The rules can be as simple as if CPS is less than 50 and CPP is less than 50, then we delete it. If CPS is greater than 50 and CPP is less than 50, then we keep it as is. If CPS is less than 50 and CPP is greater than 50, then we optimize. Okay, okay, cool. Enough with the scores though. Give me something else I can use. You know you don't have to do things in the order that everyone else does them, right? What? Doing things the way that everyone else does them is gonna get you everyone else's results. Find your own way. You don't have to start with the first ring. I, 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 I didn't know that. Okay, I've mentioned getting data out of Google Search Console a couple times now. Yeah, I'm surprised you like that data so much. It is what it is. And it's the best keyword level data we can get as far as your site's organic search performance. The UI limitations are obvious. You can only get 1,000 rows per filter. On the API side, you can get 25,000 rows per filter. The real question is, how do you filter? 
Okay, so how do you filter? Actually, the first question is, where do you want to store it? The answer to that is BigQuery, because when we talk about manipulating this data, we want to make it easy to pull things from across the Google ecosystem. Yeah, App Script, Data Studio, Sheets, makes sense. In fact, all these metrics we've been talking about should be pushed to BigQuery. That way, we have persistent URL and keyword level metadata that can be used programmatically to improve a website. BigQuery, right. OK, now back to getting data out of Search Console. It's done most effectively using a data structure called a tree, or a keyword tree. The thing about using trees, though, is that you end up getting a lot of the same repeated keywords, and you need a seed set of keywords to calculate trees from. So to shortcut that, I have a JSON object with the common prefixes and suffixes to use as filters. Keep in mind that you can do 200 queries per minute and 100 million queries per month. OK, that was cool. Now, let's speed up your analysis with App Script. Since we're storing all our data in BigQuery, we can create a series of Google Sheets and functions to automate the analysis. You can use BigQuery to do heavy lifting for your ETL functions and bring back the roll-up data to your Google Sheet. You should consider creating template tables and aligning that with the output from your tools. You can make sheet templates and build functions that you can run regularly. For instance, you could calculate all those composite metrics and store them after you've collected the data. Or you can open a CSV, run a series of functions, and then print the results to your sheet. What are some of the common things you're doing with data? Deduplicating, counting, summing, looking for patterns, searching, concatenating, the usual. OK, good. How about filling in reports, preparing deliverables, emailing data? Well, I am an SEO. Sheets, Drive, Analytics, Docs, Slides, Calendar, Gmail, all have services you can connect to via App Script. You can basically have anything in the ecosystem be a trick. Ah, uh, I'd only been using ad scripts to do integrated search work based on your absolute rankings model. I was pulling data from APIs, but it looks like this app script ecosystem is much more built out than I knew. Yeah, and it's all basic JavaScript. That's why I recommend it over VBA or trying to tie everything together in Python using Colab. OK, let's talk about entities and topics. You're going to need text analysis to do optimization and scale and to understand the relationship between pages. There's four things you need to master. Named entity recognition, LDA, edit distance, and ingram. This seems like a spot where I should be taking notes. Well, those are the most actionable things to compute when you're considering optimization and where to drop links. There's some of the primary NLP operations that search engines will use when processing pages. We do this with a combination of libraries, tools, and coding functions. If you want a shortcut, you can use Phrase's Open Search API to quickly derive this based on SERPs. If you weren't technical, their front end will give you just the same data in a simplified manner. Yeah, yeah, give me the technical version. OK. I personally recommend doing the name entity recognition using Google's NLP API, because your data will then be limited to the entities that Google knows and cares about. Everything else, you can use Spacey and a couple other JavaScript libraries to compute. You'll need the Spacey, LDA, Edit Distance, Wink NLP Utils, and Ngram packages to be able to build out enough of an NLP pipeline. I love how this is all JavaScript. Yeah, Python is great and all, but Node is much easier to get into production. OK, so for competitive comparisons, you want to pull SERP data using SERP API, then crawl the results, extract the content, run it through that NLP pipeline, and then store the scores for comparison. Within your site, you do the same thing and then use that to inform internal linking and surface the data in the CMS for content optimization. And then I could do edit distance against the keyword owners in the various tags and use that to further determine how optimized the pages. Exactly. The use cases for this are pretty crazy. This really helps me turn content into a more technical effort. Yeah, we call it technical content optimization at IPO Rank. OK, Ahrefs has an endpoint for identifying broken link targets. You can monitor that, check the content of the dead pages in your database, the Wayback Machine, or previous common crawls, and programmatically set up redirect rules at the edge, in your application, or in the server config. If you have the content, make sure you look for the closest entity matches on your site, because it's highly likely that Google's comparing the redirect target to what they had indexed. Oh, that must be why when sometimes we redirect broken link targets, there's no impact. <laughs> It depends. <laughs> That's the longest I've ever heard you speak without saying that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about scraping. 
If you're anything like me, you spend more time fussing with XPath than actually extracting content. XPath is the only thing that annoys me more than regular expressions. Yeah, I prefer CSS selectors. They're more elegant and more intuitive. Chrome will give you XPath or CSS selectors for a given element in the Inspect tab, but CSS selectors just naturally click for me. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't using these before. I know, right? Chrome will also generate the commands for making an HTTP request in Node, Curl, and the command line. You can find it in the Network tab by each request. Nice. I didn't know that was a feature. Yeah, I just noticed it myself recently. Okay, so we got two types of clients for our purposes. Curl, which is an HTTP request library, and a headless browser, which is a browser with Yeah, I've been hearing you talk about these for almost 10 years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Curl is something that every SEO should be familiar with. It's a command line library that powers many of the tools used to crawl the web, and it's available for every programming language. I use it mostly as a low overhead way to check things like HTTP headers and response bodies. I find myself using it most often to check for cloaking. People are still cloaking? Oh, absolutely. It's much more of a gray area than it was before. Here's a few commands that I run to do those types of checks. Seems easy enough. I take it this doesn't come native with my machine. No, but it's pretty easy to find, and it's a JavaScript library. So you can grab the server-side render code and store it as needed. Now, for headless browsing, we use a JavaScript library called Puppeteer. It's made for controlling headless Chrome. I typically use it in Node, so let's install it real quick. CDNs and some reasonably sophisticated websites have started to aggressively check for headless browsers. So you want to get the Puppeteer Extra Stealth plugin to make sure that you don't get blocked. I always knew you had a little hacker in you, Mike. Can't leave hacks alone, the game needs me. Okay, so with Puppeteer, unless you're building a crawler, what we really want to do is capture the full DOM of all the pages that we want and save them to BigQuery. Then we can manipulate and extract the data that we need later. Decoupling tasks like this really helps you when you need to scale. Now that we've got the pages in the database, we can take our time parsing the HTML using the CSS selectors using a library called Cherry. It's basically jQuery for the server side. If you're having any trouble scraping, open the page, right-click the element, then grab the CSS selector, pop that into your code, and then abstract the text like so. Nice. That's really easy to get anything out of any page, especially when they're JavaScript transformations. Exactly. Is this what working at IPO rank is like? I feel like I just drank from a fire hose and I just want to play with all these tools and libraries. <laughs> Depends who you ask. All right, I'm getting some sleep. You keep practicing and committing what we discussed to memory. We'll make a game plan in the morning. After tomorrow night, my hack will go global and cast us back into a technological dark age. <laughs> I have something for you. Don't you want to know what happened last night? Yeah, here. Yeah. That tells me everything I need to know. Google Glass? They still make those? <laughs> of course not. I noticed that they operate on a protocol that the Dark Clown is somehow not jamming. It'll make it easy for me to communicate with you and see what you see. This time, we go in together. Yeah, yeah, don't get all Disney movie on me. I'm ready. I see you in a different order this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gave me the media site this time. Okay. After you run your screaming frog crawls from the command line, pull your GSC data, and then compute your keyword ownership, content performance, and content potential scores. I was up practicing all night. I got this. I'll set up the automated tests. Most media sites are using single page applications and bogged down by ads these days. Check GSC to make sure they aren't blocking the API endpoint for Google. That can cause rendering issues. Oh. And check to see how long scripts are taken in the performance tab. That can cause Google to cancel execution. 
That's a good call. Yeah, and Google adheres to robots.txt on ad networks. So when you're checking your speed measures, make sure you're ignoring the ads that are blocked by robots.txt too. Gotcha. Okay, I found some conflicting canonicals being set between HTTP headers and XML sitemaps. Just fix that. Let's do a crawl request and we should be set. Mike, I've done everything I usually do. I always get tripped up trying to do something extra. What am I missing? Hmm. It's an e-commerce site. He's looking for speed hacks. How are the core web vitals looking? Nothing new under the sun. How about the code coverage? Surprisingly, every page type on this site has 100% code coverage. Okay. Let's use RHEL pre-render. Chrome updated it to be a no-state prefetch, so it doesn't load everything in the invisible tab the way it used to, but it'll still speed things up. I saw about an 83% speed increase on my site from it. So what we can do is use the InstaClick library to pick the next page based on where the mouse hovers. That's a slick hack. Work. Let's optimize on the database layer, too. More of the performance gains will be there than on the front end. What's the tech stack? PHP 5.6, WordPress 4.7, WooCommerce 3, and MySQL 5.6 on AWS. OK, let's upgrade all the software. Let's get them to PHP 7.4 and bump them up to Aurora. Let's set up op caching, implement memcache, create indexes, optimize queries, and pre-process some of the derived data. Nice. We're getting one second load times now, but still no indication that we're done yet. Hmm. OK. Here's one that I don't share often. Let's pull a list of competitor URLs and scrape them for inventory. In cases where the competitor inventory is low, let's use that to inform how we boost the internal linking structure. Hey, let's hear it for structured data. Fancy meeting you here. I've always wanted to say that. I had my suspicions. You always were a bit off, and you're still making the same mistakes. And I thought you'd be the one to solve this by now. We can't all be right. So what, this is all an elaborate scheme to get back at IPO rank for not hiring you? You were always too confident. It may have started that way, but I've beaten the whole IPO rank team and I've beaten you 72 times. Now I just need you and Mike King to know I've surpassed you both. So this is a rat beef? Everything has always been a joke to you, yet you've come here for the past 72 days. Well, there's nothing else to do, and I'm the only one who can save the world. Or maybe it's because you wanted to know what happened to Jamie. Well, this has been fun. I'm out. This room looks just like the others. It's just green. You'd expect this guy to be a little more creative. We don't know what happens when you make it this far. I'm on standby to help you work through anything that comes up. Cool. I probably won't need you, but at least this way you can be a footnote to history. Wait. This is one of the sites I optimized before. The only thing I couldn't solve was how to get viable copy on the category pages at scale. Hmm. Is the JSON that composes the page accessible? Look through the XHR requests in the Network tab in DevTools. Yes, I got it. There's a lot of features here that could be used to generate copy, but how? This stuff is the future. There's a whole subset of natural language generation called data to text, where people are taking structured data and turning it into paragraphs. Unfortunately, the implementations are mostly academic right now. Some help you are. Well, at least I picked a cool outfit if this is the last time anyone sees me. No, we can take what we do know and apply it to this. Content spinning? Is it 2007? Exactly. Transformer technology works by taking prompts and guessing the next word. It tends to get facts wrong, but the copy is otherwise coherent. 
We can fine tune a model by scraping copy from competitor websites and then get the structured data in the sentences using a library called Rose NLG or by using Wink NLP Utils. Then we pull variants on the phrase from the paraphrase.org project using each sentence from the spinner. You can then have a prompt to generate a paragraph using GPT-2. Then boom, we have descriptive text. Why do the bad guys always give us a way to stop them? The Dark Clown Saga came to a head last night in Coney Island. Local hacker Casey Robbins was able to crack the code after 73 attempts. 36 missing search marketers were recovered at the scene. No word on the Dark Clown's whereabouts, but law enforcement is on a manhunt throughout the tri-state area. Stay tuned for these stories after the break. Wall Street rallies after the dark clown. And is it time for Google to be broken up? Tech entrepreneur Elon Musk is courting controversy once again. His artificial intelligence firm, OpenAI, is said to be ready to release its GPT-3 as an API for commercial use. No official release date has been set, but we'll have that story plus the weather and what's happening this weekend coming up next.